Ladies and gents, we're going back to something simple. So let's check it out. This is just a simple 41212 AFCF, AP, Mazala, blah, 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 all of that. As you can see, it is a fairly standard straight through the middle 41212. Uh, and yeah, I figured so many Dortmunds, Klops, and Guardiola tactics. Let's just try something simple. This tactic is from someone called Sploff on the Steam Workshop. It says it is a Geg and Press Tiki Taka balance style formation with focus on supporting wingbacks and two Mazalas with attacking and support duty, forming a diamond midfield with a ball winning midfielder on support and with an advanced playmaker and two forwards in different roles. Works well for mid to top uh, Premier League teams. Standard as the two Mazalas and wingbacks will support the attack and score lots of goals. So in a minute, we're going to see what our three teams have done in the middle and lower and student to a point uh, and top of the Premier League table. But this 4-1-2-1-2 starts with a sweeper keeper in support, wing backs on both sides in support, ball playing defender on the left as a stopper, a ball playing defender as in cover on the right, ball winning midfielder in support in the DM role. Mazala in attack, Mazala in attack, an advanced playmaker in support, an advanced forward in attack on the left, and a complete forward in support on the right. As you can see, attacking mentality. In possession, you have attacking width is narrow, approach play is pass into space, play out of defense, passing directness is shorter, tempo is slightly higher, mix crosses, work the ball in the box, play for set pieces, and run at defense. I don't, you don't see a lot of play for set pieces with a top of the, you know, Man City or Liverpool type teams but uh, in transition when possession has been lost counter press counter distribute to the center backs and then out of possession a high press line of engagement a higher defensive line trigger press much more often get stuck in and step up more but how did that work for our three teams well as you can see it actually didn't do too badly Tottenham in fourth Newcastle in fifth and then Wolves in 11th is not too bad 55 points eh, probably somewhat average uh, Tottenham with 69, a little higher than average, eh, about average, I would say, actually, Newcastle, same. So overall, it, again, I always say it all depends on the other teams here. Liverpool with 92, Manchester City with 82, and then Arsenal with 73. It's quite a spread. But Tottenham, Newcastle, and Wolves pretty much on bang average, uh, I would definitely say. Tottenham schedule looking pretty nice to a point. I mean, a lot of green, no draws whatsoever in the first half. Uh, but you do get a couple of reds here and there, a couple of losses. Champions League loss right there to Marseille. Uh, you start out the second half, 2-3 loss in the EFL Cup fourth round. You continue on in the FA Cup and the Champions League up until Sevilla. Sevilla knocks you out with a one-all penalty loss at home. Uh, and then Nottingham Forest kicking you out of the FA Cup 3-5. to five. And then the rest of the season, eh. Newcastle, still a lot of green. Nil eight to Liverpool. Yeah, that hurts. Uh, you got three losses in a row right there, one to Tottenham, one six. But you hit the second half uh, of the season running. EFL Cup semis, you're out against Arsenal, 2-5 and 0-1. And then the FA Cup fifth round, 1-3 against Crystal Palace. Wolves, I mean, an absolutely awful August. Uh, a nice September, average middle of the road October. EFL Cup third round, you're out against Southampton, 2-4. And then FA Cup, FA Cup, FA Cup, fifth round, there you are, two to four against Southampton. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, look at all these losses. Wow. Transfer-wise for Tottenham, you got a couple. Uh, we've seen some of them before. Silva in from RB Leipzig. Zalarian from, or Zalarian from Columbus Crew for 4.7. Victor Nelson and Lavaja. Tanganga goes out for 22 and a half to Milan. Wow. Usually it's like 10 or 11. Newcastle, we've seen them all before. Tony Weston, Ugarte, and Sousa. Wolves coming in with Renato Sanchez from uh, PSG on a loan. So that's not too bad. And squad-wise, as you can see, Tottenham. I mean, they got a couple in the greens. Not too high, though. 7-3-1 for Harry Kane. Seems to be the highest. Newcastle, a little bit less green. 7-2-7 for Jolinton. 7-3-0 for Ryan Frazier. So, I mean, you've got, well, I mean, Frazier's only got three off the bench. But 7-3-9 for Callum Wilson. 7-5-1 for Isaac. A lot better than Tottenham. And then Wolves, 719 for Lamina. Two off, the, I mean, two starts, 12 off the bench, though. Data hub wise for Tottenham, shaky defense in the tactic and very good in attack. That seems to be what a lot of the tactics that we cover are. And again, what I've seen is if you're great on attacking and mediocre on defense, 
you're still probably going to get a lot of goals and still do very well. It just seems to be the way FM23 works. Defensively, you can kick it down a notch, but as long as you've got the attacking side going, and they, they pretty have it. They pretty much have it. Um, not quite all the way up, but, I mean, you still got some really above Premier League average numbers that is fantastic to see. Newcastle, exactly the same. Very good in attack accuracy. Even better numbers than Tottenham. Uh, it's kind of interesting that they didn't do as well as, as Tottenham did uh, a couple points down. But shaky defensively, yeah. And then Wolves, shaky defensively. Very good in attack. You still have some numbers uh, on you know above the Premier League average was a night to see. Not quite near Tottenham or Newcastle. But, I mean, with 55 points or thereabouts, you're not going to get that. Stats-wise, most goals for Liverpool, 101, but Newcastle not too far behind with 93. Tottenham and Wolves, 83 and 74, coming in fourth and fifth. Uh, fewer shots, nobody. Most possessions, Tottenham's in there. Dri dribbles made, Newcastle, uh, Wolves, and Tottenham all in there. Fewest conceded, nobody. Most shutouts, nobody. I mean, again, defensively, not all that great. But most tackles won. You've got Newcastle and Wolves there. I mean, you do have some defensive sides, not really the shutouts part. Best pass completion, Tottenham. Uh, all three teams in most shots for, and then most points per game, as you'd expect. Most goals, Sun, in the, leading the league with 26. Wilson, Kane, and Jimenez all in there as well. Again, a very attacking side, very attacking tactic. They've done very well. Uh, most assists, Kulisewski, Isaac, Jolinton, and Nunez all in there. Most player of the match awards, Isaac with eight. Nice to see. Pass completion, most dribbles made, four in the top four. There you go. Uh, fewest conceded, most shutouts. Hugo Lloris is in there, so that's interesting. But most tackles won. You do have Trippier and Jolinton. Most key passes, Trippier and Porro. Most shots, there you go, with Sun and Isaac. And as we hit the player stats in all competitions for each team, Tottenham, 29 goals for Sun. Harry Kane was 7-3-1. Again, it's a little lower. I mean, 7-3-1 is fantastic, and especially for Kane. But when you're doing fairly well, I, I would have liked to have seen someone at least better. But Kulisevsky with 15. And then Basuma, Betancourt, and Kane, all with five player of the match awards piece. It is nice to see them spread out. So it, it does mean that they're, you know, their players are playing fairly well. But again, the 7-3-1, I think I'm just being picky. But, you know, that's just me. We've seen some numbers that are high, high, high. Seven fives and thereabouts. So 7 3 one's a little below. Newcastle, Callum Wilson with 25 goals. Isaac with 7-5-1, highest average rating. There you go. Jolinton and Isaac with 14 assists apiece. Wow. And then Isaac with 10 player of the match awards. Isaac, really the star of this show. And then Wolves, Jimenez with 20 goals. I mean, for a mid-level team in the table, still very good. Jimenez with 7-2-2, highest average rating. Sarabi and Nunez with 12 assists apiece. And Cunha with 5 player of the match awards. Overall, I mean, you can see the league table looks... Pretty much bang on average for these three teams uh, from what we've seen throughout all these tactic talks with them. But I think it did work fairly well for some players. And again, as I always say, if you take control yourself, you've got a lot of things that you can do on your own. You know, change up the transfers. Uh, you can do the shouts and things like that during the matches. So change up the training, do whatever you want to do. That could give you that little bit of an extra edge. But that, I mean... I think it, it's a tactic to look at if you like that 4 one 2 2 style up the middle. So there you go. But that is it for me, Sefian FM, for the Football Manager blog channel, saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.